Mark 14, 17. And the way we study the Bible, we're going to be in Mark 14 probably the rest of the week. Because we're, we're not going to say, okay, we're done chapter 14, move on to 15. We are in the final day, days, couple days of the life of Jesus. We're coming upon the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. We're coming into some church ordinances. And in the evening, 6 p.m., Jewish, he comes with the 12. Now, he just sent two of them, Peter and, and Jane, John, and they found the upper room. It's furnished. Everything's there now provided. Now he's got the 12. And they're in the upper room. As they sat and did eat. Now, never mind the, the pictures you see, the Catholic, you know, they're around the big long table. And that, that's, that's not the way things are. That's not how it's described in the Gospel of John. Lord willing, when we get there, we'll talk about that. So they sat and did eat. All right, so they're sitting and eating. Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, one of you, Shall one of you which eateth with me shall betray me. Now we've already talked about you. He's already met last night. He's met and settled on 30 pieces of silver. Now Jesus said shall. That's future. Judah, Judas has not sealed his faith. What's Jesus doing? He's giving Judas an opportunity. Hey, you need to repent. You need to get right. Don't do what you're doing. And they began to be sorrowful. And to say unto one another, Is it I? Another said, is it a, they don't even know it's Judas. They don't even know it's them. Why? What if Peter found out that Judas was going to betray Jesus? We already learned, I believe, the Gospel of John. I think it is. There's a sword there. If Peter will take a sword and slice off an ear, he would take in that sword and sliced off Judas. No one knows anything. And he answered and said unto them. I mean, they're having this private debate amongst themselves. It is one of the twelve. Is that one in twelve, thirteen? Now, Jesus already knows. The fate of Judas. But there's opportunity for Judas to get right. The moment he sent, I mean, he's already offered, been offered the, the 30 pieces of silver. That's not the sin. The moment he receives the money, the, remote, the moment he gives Jesus that kiss. That dippeth with me in the ditch. And what it is? It's the sock. What you dip your, you dip your bread in. And even still they don't get it. The Son of Man, Jesus, indeed goeth. As is written in of him. So the scriptures proclaim prophecy. About the suffering and death. And betrayal. We saw that in Zechariah. You'll see it in the Psalms. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Look at that woe. And when God says woe, you better stop in your tracks. You need to stop your life when God says woe and <laughs> don't move. If you're going to make any movement, repent.
good would work for that man if he had never been born. So Judas is a normal human being that's been born. Woe to him. Jesus knows who it is. Judas knows who it is. But the eleven don't. And there's some like me who believe that Judas is the false prophet. He's a great imitator of Jesus that Jesus was born. So was Judas. But we're not going to talk about that now. And as they did eat. Okay. Now when you run to the gospel of John like the Catholics do. They will say at this point Judas has left. And the idea is, we'll show you, that the holy sacrament of the host, it's impossible for the betrayal man, Judas, to take of such a sacred sacrament. So the Catholic Church will boast that Judas ain't here. Well, if Judas is not here, and Peter would have been made aware of the fact. <laughs> they did eat, and Jesus took bread. Okay, now I'm going to start paying attention. We're going to look at the, 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 uh, what do you call it? The, the last Passover of Jesus and the first Lord's Supper. Jesus took bread. So we have bread at a Baptist Lord's Supper. We don't have a wafer. We don't have a host. And I've been in several different churches and there's several different things. Several different ways. And blessed. And we've asked God to bless our meals and break it. So it's a loaf of bread. It ain't a host around it. And I know that the Catholic gets there and he takes his host and he breaks because he's breaking the literal body of Jesus, they believe. And every time a mass is performed, they are sacrificing themselves because Jesus died once. Not every day. You say, what do you mean every day? The Catholic Church will do the Mass every day. Which defiles the Scriptures. He takes that piece of bread and he breaks it. And breaks it into 12 pieces and gave it to them. There are 12 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It said, take, eat. This is my body. Is it literally the body? No, it's a piece of bread. And yet the Catholic Church, by the, the lucky charms of magic and, and, and nonsense, they will say that the host becomes, and, and you can check the catechism, you can ask a priest, you can ask a nun, you can ask the pope, and you can ask a dedicated Catholic that knows what he's talking about. It is. I don't have. I got rid of those books. It is the literal body of Jesus Christ. Well, friend, that is cannibalism. And there's no way possible that. There is Jesus Christ standing there with a loaf of bread, 12 pieces, and here's my butt. What do you think Peter would have done? If Jesus handed Peter a finger, here, eat this. Here, John, here's my kneecap. Enjoy it. That would be 
against the law because you were not to break a bone of the Passover meal. The lamb. He took the cuff. The cuff. Now, I want you as we read 23 and 24. We read 23 and 24. I want you to give a hoo-ha, a shout, put in the comments, say, stop! There's the grape juice, there's the wine. Ready? He took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it, the cup. The Lord's Supper is bread divided amongst all and one cup. Not several cups. He said unto them, this is my blood. What? Of the New Testament which is shed for many. It's the cup. Cup in the Bible is a picture of judgment. That when we partake of the cup of the Lord's Supper, we are to be reminded of the judgment of sin upon Jesus that he had to shed his blood. This is my blood of the New Testament. The New Testament has not happened yet. It's going to happen the moment Jesus dies. He's standing there or sitting there at the table, whichever it be. He's alive and well. And he is not taking a knife and cutting himself in pieces. And he's not bleeding. And they're not getting drunkard as, as the, um, the Episcopal Church, I believe. Which is shed for many. Everybody's going to heaven. No, it's not. At the Lord's Supper, he says many because not all get saved. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine. Okay, there's great juice. Fruit of the vine. It's ripe. It's fresh. It hasn't been sitting for many. Until that day when I drink it new, new wine, in the kingdom of God, the millennium. You say, well, Jesus came down and he had meals with him and fish and all that. But he didn't drink the grape juice. He drank water. And he's not going to drink grape juice until he comes back in the millennium in the land. So we come to tell you that in heaven there's no grapes. And there's no wine drinking. And if you were to get into the mythology of the Greeks and Romans and Babylonian, you would have Zeus sitting there with a chalice like the Catholic Church, and it's filled with wine. And they can see in that wine what's going on in the earth. And when you when you look at you know the three ghosts of the of the Christmas past and the Christmas future, then you know the second one, he's glory and the happiness of wine. That's not Jesus. The bread symbols the body. That's what he said, but it's not his body. That cup is a symbol of the blood. And when they had sung a hymn, probably from the Psalms, 
You see, there there are songs that come out of the Bible. Now, it doesn't come out. A lot of your hymns in the hymnal ain't biblical at all. They went out unto the Mount of Olives. Okay. So, Matthew 26. And we're going to just run to the scriptures now. Matthew 26, 20. I'm just going to look at the Gospels. We're not going to look at men. We're not going to look at how great. Look at what the, what the Gospels say. Now, when evening was come, 6 p.m., he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you will betray me. So they're sitting down, they're eating. They're eating the Passover meal, and Jesus said, Hey, one of you guys is going to betray me. Well, that's a big shock. Can you imagine? Everyone's got something in their mouth, they're drinking on, they may be talking back and forth with Jesus. Hey, you know, one of you guys is going to betray me. And jaws are dropping down on the table. And they have no idea. They, they understand what betrayal is. They have no idea. And they even think, is it me? And they were exceedingly sorrowful. Who's going to do this to you, Jesus? They, including Judas. Judas' sorrow is, and he's talking about me. And began every one of them to say unto him, Lord. Is it I? They don't even know. So don't get on your high wagon like I, like some people I know early in my Christian. You know, we're, we're the best. We're the great. Nothing's going to ever happen to me. You don't know. I thought I was going to be a street preacher for an entire month life. I'm too hell. And the answer said, he that dippeth his hand with me in the ditch the same shall betray me. And they still didn't get it. He and Judas dips the bread at the same time in the dish. And guess what? <laughs> They're not paying attention again. The Son of Man goes as is written scriptures of him. In Zechariah and all the scriptures. But woe. Imagine what the other Bibles say. Unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? Oh, boy. What did we just talk about yesterday? He went and said, hey, listen, how much will you give me? And Jesus said, Thou has said. And as they were eating, Jesus took, notice that Jesus is interrupting their meal. Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it, like that woman in Alabaster box that got Judas all upset. Isaiah 53 says he'll be broken. And gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Not to be taken literal. He took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them say, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood. It's the cup. But we know it's the great Jew. Of the New Testament. So great Jews. Represents blood. And there are some like me. Who believe it was a grape. That Adam and Eve ate. Because until then. They had no blood. But, which is shed for many. Again. For the remission. For the forgiveness. Of sins. No water involved. They are not drinking water. It's a cup with fruit of the vine. 
But I say to you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine, the grape, until that day when I drink it new, new wine, with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Plain and simple. Luke 22. The medical doctor. Luke 22. 14. And when the hour was come, 6 p.m., he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. And said to him, with desire, I desire to eat the Passover with you before I suffer, suffer and die. For I say unto you, I will not no more eat thereof unto the fulfillment of the kingdom of God. Well, that's kind of interesting because when he shows up in the upper room, you got any fish? Got anything to eat? And they give him fish. When he's on the road to a name of the two disciples, he sits down and has a meal with them. He took the cup, gave thanks, and said, take this and divide it amongst yourself. Everybody gets the same cup and gets to drink out of the same thing. Are you making a piece of plastic the Lord's sacrifice? For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Millennium. And he took the bread. You know, Luke has got it backwards. Well, not backwards. And gave thanks and break it, the bread, and gave unto them, saying, 12 pieces. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. You are the partake of the Lord's Supper for a remembrance of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And Paul will go on to say that he's coming again. It is not a sacrament. It is not salvation. Likewise, also the cup... At the supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. And said, Behold, the hand of him that betrayed with me is on the table. Truly, the Son of Man goes as was determined, written, but woe unto that man again, woe. By the way, there are three woes in Revelation that man by whom is betrayed. And they began to inquire amongst themselves which of it was that should do this thing. <laughs> then they have a great strife on who is the greatest. <laughs> it's all about Jesus. <laughs> and there's Stu sitting at the table. Who's the greatest? Who's the greatest? Football teams do it. Baseball teams do it. Churches do it. But you forget the greatest is God. Nonsense. John 13. Gospel of John 13. Verse 18. I speak none of you all. I know who I am chosen. But that the scriptures may be fulfilled, he that eateth bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before I, it come, the betrayal, that when it is come to pass, you have believed that I am he. So the sign of Judas is the event of Judas is a sign, and Jews require a sign that when this happens, it is for you to be remembered 
that Jesus said it would already happen, and Jesus said that it's already foretold in the Bible. You can go to the law. You can go to the, 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 uh, the prophets. You can go to the poetry section, and you can find what is written about Jesus. It's a remembrance. It's not a sacrament. It is to remind you again of the death, burial, and resurrection. And it's to remind you again because life gets busy. Jesus is coming back. Only the saved are to the partake, as Paul would get. It's never to be, I do it because it saves me. It's not the literal body of Jesus because it says bread. He broke the bread. He didn't break himself. And not a bone of him would be broken, said the scripture. But his skin was broken. They tore his skin all apart like you do with the bread. And out from the skin came the blood. That simple. 